75% of you guys drive to school, so that's 25%. Take the bus or however you get your walk. Um, so let's say all of a sudden you can't drive anymore. Um, so does Shahiro and Jason, they say, well, I just rent a car or I use my mom's car or whatever. Well, I had this situation where I have a chronic pain disorder where I have to take um, narcotics, so I cannot legally drive. So there's no renting cars, there's no borrowing cars, so I have to take time in. And this is all new for me. So what I did was I took four of the main points that you guys gave me for not taking the bus. Um, it's time consuming, hours don't work for my needs, overcrowding, or late or early buses. So let's say we take time consuming. One of the persons in this, in this class answering the AAQ said, sometimes switching buses and waiting for buses takes too long and just be easier to drive, especially when I just want to get there. I can totally understand this. For me to go to work, it takes seven minutes to drive there. For me to take the bus, it takes 45 minutes to take the bus. So why would I take the bus? Well, one reason I take the bus to work is because it costs three hundred dollars just to park it. Um, I work at Lewis and Clark. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do. Jason or Brian said that for him to get to school, it would take a bus and a train to get here. But he said what he could do is just take a, go to a park and ride and get take the max. So that's what I, I do here is I just go to a park and ride and then I take the bus straight here instead of having to take two buses. There are, according to the TriMet and according to a website called the Metropolitan Transportation Planning website, for you to drive 20 miles round trip a day, so doing your errands or going back and forth to school, you're pretty much spending $2,000 a year for just car maintenance and gas and things like that. If you were to add on top of that $10 a day for parking, nine months out of the year, that's about $2,500 in parking fees, not even including parking uh, tickets that you're probably gonna get. <laughs> I get those no matter if I pay the thing or not. Uh, as well as you're helping out Oregon by reducing traffic up to 30%, which was a study done by TriMet. Another point that we're gonna talk about is hours don't work for many. A lot of you guys mentioned that you go to the bars and when the bars are full, there's no buses, there's no TriMet at all. Well, first of all, somebody said, buses don't run after the last call, so I have to say that I'm guilty of drinking and driving. Well, would you rather have a DUI charge or take take a taxi? I talked to somebody at TriMet and they said that the, a study that they did showed that it's actually not beneficial financially for them to run after 2.30 um, because it's only two days a week that people are out using the bars. I mean, unless it's college students who go out on Wednesday and Thursday. It's a huge safety reason for their drivers, for their other passengers, and things like that. But they are working to add new TriMet lines, and new um, MAX lines, and as well as a new commuter train. This new commuter train is pretty cool. It's like the Japanese train. We'll show first. This is the current way that TriMet goes. So it's pretty heavily used east to west and north side. What they're going to do with um, the MAX is add on top of that. Uh, it's not totally on, on there, right? But they're, this, these are the new lines that they're adding. So they're going to add a line down 205 that goes all the way to um, Clackamas Town Center, I think. One that they don't show in here is they're adding a line to PSU. It's gonna run right in front. And it's gonna go from PSU to the train station, Union Station, and it's also gonna go all the way to Milwaukee. And then this one is a commuter train, this 60 mile an hour train that's gonna run from Wilsonville and it connects past 217 up to the Beaverton um, Max station, so that's that's going to be awesome. It's going to really help out. And then they're going to have um, another problem you guys mentioned is overcrowding. So somebody mentioned a lot of times there's a sardine effect on the bus or max, and sometimes the driver breaks so hard that the date of Jesus rancher falls in my lap. And they, they also <laughs>
taking the max, and so that would really reduce the overcrowding effect. And then for all these bus lines that are currently running, so the max, um, the max uh, areas that they're building, they're going to reroute all those, those, max, uh, those buses to places that aren't being used right now, or that don't have a lot of um, you know, service. So currently I'm forced to use TriMet, and what I drive, well actually it saves me 20 minutes to not have to worry about parking, so it's actually cheaper and faster for me to take the bus. So I might not be able to legally drive, although I am guilty of driving under the influence. TriMet is, according to myself, many of you, it has its downsides. It may be gross when the local drunk throws up on your shoe <laughs> as you're on your way to school, or you're left standing for 15 minutes at a bus stop with no bus in sight that you were sure was already 15 minutes late when you got there. Or of course you're forced to drive drunk home drunk because your designated drunk driver had too many to drink. <laughs> <laughs> but TriMet does save you about $4,000 annually in gas, parking, and maintenance fees of your car just from driving 20 miles of round trip a day. It saves the environment and it helps ease congestion on the freeways. And of course, get to walk in the rain and look like a drowned rat at work all day. Questions? Um, so, like all these new lines, like, these are for sure, like they're going to make them? Yeah. That's the newest cool. one, the PSU one has been open in 2008.